Boeing is having troubles in space. NASA is still trying to deal with problems on the company's Starliner capsule. So in the meantime, the agency has delayed next, next week's SpaceX mission to the International Space Station. The Crew-9 launch was initially scheduled for August 18th. NASA and SpaceX officials are now targeting a launch date of September 24th. That's because those astronauts cannot dock at the ISS until a free port becomes available. In a statement, NASA says the adjustment allows more time for mission managers to finalize return crew planning for Boeing spacecraft. The agency went on to say they have no decision. No decisions have been made regarding Starliner's return. The two astronauts aboard that vessel have been in space roughly seven weeks longer than expected. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins me now from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So, Bill, you have new reporting on CBSNews.com that NASA is considering a plan B here to get these Starliner uh, original crew members home. Well, you know, like, like I always tell people, if you've ever seen the movie Apollo 13, you know NASA is always working on a backup plan. I mean, that's just standard procedure. And for the past few weeks, we've heard a lot of talk about, well, if you can't come home on Starliner, how would you get these astronauts down? And the leading candidate for that is you would bring them down on a SpaceX Crew Dragon. Uh, as you mentioned, the Crew Dragon is launching now on September 24th. What they may well do is launch that spacecraft with two people on board, not four. So when it gets up to the space station, uh, uh, Butch Wilmore and, and Sonny Williams, the crew of the Starliner, would extend their stay in space another six months and then come down on that Crew Dragon in February when that mission normally would end. So we've heard talk they were working on this or thinking about it anyway. Um, the longer that drags out trying to come up with a solution to the Starliner's uh, uncertainties, uh, I think the more likely that scenario is to play out. Feels like astronomical musical chairs. At the news conference, did NASA provide any further details on issues with the Starliner? They talked about it in general, about all the testing they've done. Um, you know, looking at the model, I mean, all of the problems are located in this aft section they call the service module. That's where these thrusters are uh, that haven't worked properly earlier in the mission and where the helium leaks are that they've known about since the day after launch. Uh, they're really trying to analyze the test data, all the telemetry to get comfortable that all those systems are going to work properly when the astronauts strap in to come home. If they can't get comfortable with that, then it's plan B. And I'm not sure how this is going to play out yet. They've still got some more tests and analysis to go. Uh, we're expecting a decision sometime in the next week to week and a half. What domino effect could this have? What other future missions could be stalled? Well, actually, you know, working with the Crew Dragon like this with two, two seats empty and uh, come down with the Starliner, it's a minimal impact. Of course, not minimal to the two astronauts that are on that flight that might get bumped off uh, for the launch. Uh, but in terms of the space station, the normal crew rotation flights, which happen every six months, that would continue normally. Now, the wild card is NASA was hoping to certify the Starliner for operational missions starting next year. Uh, given the trouble they've had on this flight, even if they get it down successfully without a crew on board, uh, all the testing and work that's going to go into making sure this never happens again I may well push the next flight of the Starliner uh, into 2026. We're just, just too early to say. So if Wilmore and Williams do end up spending more than nine months in space instead of the original one week or so, I mean, what can you tell us about what their mindset is? Of course, when you're an astronaut, the, the, the thrill is just being up there. I'm sure, you know, we've talked to you before yeah. that they're, they're happy to be there and be able to contribute to the science that's being done on the ISS. But, I mean, at some point... You know, they, they might want to see their families, have a hot meal. Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, actually, it's, uh, it's about 8.8 .8 months. I had a typo in my story, if that's where you saw the more than nine months. I'll get that corrected. Um, no, you know, astronauts are professionals. These are both former military test pilots. They're both veteran astronauts. They've flown to space before. And as they will tell you, all the astronauts in the Corps, whenever they launch to the station, there is always the chance that something would happen that would extend your mission. Uh, that is not unusual. Um, certainly an extension like this would be unexpected, uh, but their veterans, uh, their families know all of that. Uh, and at least today on the space station, you know, astronauts can pick up an Internet phone on the station and dial anybody they want. They've got video conferencing. Uh, they, you know, they can make phone calls home whenever they like. Uh, so, I mean, they have a lot of conveniences they didn't have in the old days. But, you know, you're right. I mean, extending your mission by six months when you weren't planning on that, I mean, that's puts a strain on the family at home, obviously. But, uh, 
you know, they're prepared for that, and I, I don't anticipate that being a, a, a big deal in, in the big scope of things that we're talking about here. All right. Bill Harwood, thank you.